Hi guys, this is Mia and today I will be painting bubble tea. This is an illustrative approach that I don't usually go for, but it's a way of simplifying food illustration. I guess I would say this is more of a kawaii or a cute style, so if you're interested, please join in. Like usual, I will start out by sketching so I can explain the form to you before painting. I'm going to first start off by drawing out the cups. To make the cups, I'm going to first start with an oval and continuing to the bottom of the cup by drawing out two slightly diagonal lines finished off with a curved line at the bottom that is around the same curvature as the oval at the top. Now, depending on the thickness or thinness of the oval, that will determine the perspective of the cup itself. So if you show less of the oval, like it's close to being flat, that means you're looking at the cup from the side. And if your oval is looking very round, somewhat close to a circle, that means you're looking at the cup from a high angle. And the higher the angle, the more diagonal your lines would be towards the bottom and the shorter the cup will also be. If you want to make the lid for the cup, you can can just double the line at the bottom of the oval or create some wavy or curvy lines and make sure that the lid is slightly larger than the body of the cup. For the drink itself, I'm going to draw an oval within the cup because the top of the liquid will be visible since the glasses or the cups are clear. So with all the different angles and the width of the lid, the drink should roughly have the same oval but slightly smaller since the sides are going slightly inwards. Then we can go add the straw. I'm going to make the straw quite fat since it is a boba straw and I'm going to just draw a straight line for it. If you have a lid, make sure that you don't draw at the part where the lid is covering the straw but if you're painting without the lid, you can just draw a straight line. It would also be nice to slightly tilt the straw. I think it would make the composition more fun. Okay, so now all I need to do is finish off with the boba and I'm just going to draw circles at the bottom of the drink and I'm going to slightly vary the size and that's it. Now if the angles are slightly confusing for you to draw, you can also do this using the exact same angle for all of the drinks or even draw it fully from the sides so that means that there's no oval and it's just a straight line. I'm going to quickly draw out my composition. I want this to have more of a fun feel, so I'm going to play around with the angles and I'm going to just paint three later on. But as usual, I prefer to draw it out roughly even if I don't end up painting the exact same thing later on. It just helps um, with how I visualize things later on when I paint. I'm going to go over the colors now and for this I also will use it to draw out the cup and the colors that I will use is a mix of compost blue, a slight bit of mineral violet and a little bit of white. For the cup, I'm just going to paint an outline and this can literally be any color. It can be purple, pink or grey would also be nice but for this painting, personally, I want to go for a slightly greyish blue. While figuring out what sort of colors you want to use for the cup, you can also try it out while painting the cup itself and it's a good way to see if the colors would look nice or not considering that you'll only be painting thin lines with it. You can also use the opportunity to practice your brush control with your small brush. If you don't want to paint it freehand, you can also sketch it out first with pencil very lightly, then you can paint over the lines. I will be making three different flavors of bubble tea, so I'm going to give you the color mixtures here, but you can also create your own flavors and any color mixtures too. For the first color, I'm going to mix in yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and jaune brillant for a milk tea color. Next, I'm going to make the taro flavor, and for that, I'm going to mix in mineral violet and white. And for the last flavor, I'm going to make it a strawberry milk. And for that, I used Quinn Opera, Vermilion, and White. 
For the sago, I used a mix of rose matter, mineral violet, and sepia to create a dark brown burgundy color just to give it a little bit of hue so it doesn't look too flat. Before I paint, I'm going to draw the cups first. As I said, if you're comfortable with painting a freehand, you can go ahead and do that. Sometimes I do too, but if I want some specific angle in mind, I prefer to draw it out first just in case. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw it according to the composition and angles that I want it to be. Once I'm done drawing this out, I'm going to just outline the cups with the blue mixture that I made earlier. And I'm going to use my smallest brush, which is this size 0 to do the outlining. I want one of the glasses to have a lid and the rest to be open, but that's also up to you. You can adjust the painting however you want. Once I'm done and the outline is completely dry, I want to paint the drinks inside of the cups now. So I'm going to take medium consistency of each color and paint the cups. I'd like to paint the curve at the top of the ovals first so I know the limit of the drink. And I'm going to continue on downwards to fill in the cup. I'm also leaving the sides of the cups white or just blank so the color of the outline and the drink doesn't touch. If it does, then it's fine, but I would try to avoid it. While the paint is still wet, I also like to add a bit of thicker consistency of paint and dab it randomly at the bottom or the side of the cups just to give an uneven surface for the drink. And I'm going to do the same thing for all the three flavors. Once I finish painting the base color and the paint is dry, I'd like to add a layer on top and I'm going to leave out the oval of the drink so there's a fine line between the top and the sides of the drink for all the three flavors. For the lid of the cup, I'm going to paint it pink but this is really up to you. You can even put a little design for the cover or the lid, but I'm just going to keep this one simple and I'm just going to paint it with one color. I think in the end I also added a red outline to give it a little design, but of course you can use any color that you want. Now we can move on to the straws. I'm going to use single colors for the straw. You can literally pick any color from the palette and use it without mixing. I'm just going to pick colors that I find would suit the color of the drinks and paint the straws, which is just a thick line with the top slightly curved. For the straw, I first draw the top part of the straw, which is the most visible because it's on top of the drinks and it's not touching any of the liquid. And then for the bottom of the straw, I used a thin consistency of the color and paint a bit of the straw showing, but avoiding the top part of the drink. However, if you want the drink to look completely opaque, don't worry about adding the straw at the bottom of the drink. Once I'm done painting the straws, I'm going to move along to the bobas and I'm going to use a medium to thin consistency of the previous color mix from the Crimson Lake Mineral Violet and Sepia to paint the bubbles. I'm using a medium to thin consistency because I want to dry this first layer first and I want it to look a little bit translucent or light so I can pile a darker or a thicker consistency of the same color later on and this will give a better depth to the painting. I also forgot to mention that I switched 
to my small brush again for this so it's a little bit easier to control the paint. When I'm painting these, I try to give a little bit of space next to each of the bobas just so the paint doesn't touch too much or else it'll just become a big blob. So don't worry if it looks a little bit empty because we will be piling on the layer on top with a thicker consistency. I'm going to move back to the first drink now and as you can see, when the boba's dried off, it's a bit lighter than what it was initially. So I'm going to add a thicker consistency compared to my first layer and then paint more of the bubbles on top of it. And as you can see, I can fill in some of the empty spaces here so it doesn't look as empty as just the first layer before. I also like to paint some boba's floating up just to give it a little bit of movement. So that's pretty much it. To finish off these cups of bubble tea, I'm going to add highlights. You can either use white gouache or white pen. I'm going to show you both. So here I'm going to use white gouache first and I much prefer this now. I used to use the white pens before but because depending on your brush you can really control how much white or how little you want to put into. I find that it's just much more of a flexible medium if you use a gouache and your brush but if you're new to watercolor it's fine just to use white pen I used to also just use white pen a lot when I first started and I find that it's really easy to get out you don't need to activate it with water or anything however the thickness of the stroke is very limited or if not it's exactly the same since it's just a pen and with that in mind a lot of times if you do outlines with the white pen it might look a little bit more illustrative because you have the exact same stroke rather than controlling it with your brush and it might look a little bit more two-dimensional and cartoony but if that's the look that you're going for then just stick with the white pen. So for the highlights as you can probably see before I put some on the straw and for the tip of the straw, I used the brush because I want a really, really thin stroke for that. So it's just very light handed. And for the rest, you can actually just use the white pen. As you can see, I put a line where the straw is just so it looks a little bit more like it pops out. And I also added a little bit of white to separate the shapes of the top of the drink and the sides. And I'm also going to add a bit more highlight on the cups. When you're drawing out highlights, I suggest that you don't just do one straight line. Instead, do more of like a dashed line or mix it up with some dots too so it doesn't look too flat. And I like to vary the height of the highlights so it doesn't all look uniform. And I'm also going to add dots for a little bit of added texture to the drink. So that's pretty much the bubble tea done. If you want to just keep repeating this, you can do a whole page of this and that would look really fun too. But I wanted to add a bit of accent since I'm only painting three of them and for that I'm going to add some bobas around the composition. And I'm going to paint this by also varying the size and also the consistency and placement of them. After I finish painting all of the boba accent, it's looking a bit like 
not how I want it to look if you get what I mean. <laughs> so I decided last minute to add some strawberries and for this I used the same color mix for the strawberry milk drinks and I painted like a rounded triangular shape for the body of the mini strawberries and scatter them across the painting. Then after that I wanted to keep with the pastel color theme so I mixed in permanent green with a little bit of white to create the leaves. After that I used a bit of the boba color and I started painting the seeds of the strawberries. After I started painting the seeds I looked at it again and I see that the strawberry doesn't look as strong compared to the dark colors of the boba so I ended up outlining all of the strawberries with the same colors so it balances out as a whole and I also finished off with a bit of highlight with white gouache for the strawberries and also for the boba scattered around the page just to make them look a little bit more cute and plump. For the highlight I'm going to be using my small brush again and white gouache. I find it a lot easier since I can control the weight of it so if the areas that I want to paint white is very small it's much easier to use a brush instead of using the pen but if your painting is quite large you can stick to the pen if it's easier for you. And I'm pretty much done at this point. So this is the final painting. I really enjoyed painting this one because of the different pastel colors. I think it looks so happy and cute. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you learned something new and I will see you at the next one. Bye!